Howdy! In this lesson, we'll be using the vortex strength distribution in order to calculate the moment on a cambered airfoil. So in order to do this, we're going to look at our cambered airfoil once again. And in this lesson, we're going to be talking about the moment about the leading edge of our airfoil. Now this moment is caused by a collection of differential lifts over each segment d psi of our airfoil. Now each section of the moment will be equal to this distance which we're going to call psi times this dl prime term. Now notice that a positive dl causes a negative uh, moment, which means that we need a negative sign here. And this is just due to the aerospace uh, standard of having moments being positive in the clockwise direction. Once we have this, we can substitute in uh, the vorticity representation of the lift which is to say that this is equal to negative rho times v infinity times psi. And then we can have our d gamma, which is equivalent to gamma of psi d psi. Now, in order to evaluate the entire moment about the leading edge, we simply integrate once again over our chord. So this will be the integral from 0 to c of rho v infinity times xi times gamma of xi d xi. And in order to use the vortex distribution that we have solved for, we need to convert into theta terms. So once again, xi is equal to c over 2 times 1 minus cosine of theta. And likewise, d psi is equal to c over 2 sine theta d theta. So we can substitute this in to see that the moment about the leading edge per unit span is equal to, we can bring these guys out, rho v infinity we'll have a c over 2 from this psi term and another c over 2 from this d psi term. So we'll end up with a c squared over 4. And then we can start our integral from 0 to pi now, since we have everything in terms of theta. And now we'll have 1 minus cosine of theta times gamma of theta times sine of theta times d theta. And now we are ready to substitute in our gamma equation. So we'll say that the moment about the leading edge per unit span is equal to negative, and we'll just split these up really quick, rho v infinity over 2 times c squared over 2. And we can go ahead and bring in the 2 v infinity from our gamma and take that outside of the integral. So this will be times 2 v infinity. And then let's do this first term first. So we'll start a bracket and say a naught times the integral from 0 to pi. We'll have this 1 minus cosine theta. And the sine term here and the sine term in the denominator here are going to cancel out. So we'll just be left with a 1 plus cosine theta, d theta. And this is our entire first term. Then we'll take our infinite sum. This is from 1 to infinity. We can bring the a n term out. And then we'll have an integral from 0 to pi. Once again, we'll have 1 minus cosine theta. 
then our gamma theta that we're left with is sine of n theta. And then we need to include our sine of theta d theta. We can close our bracket. So in order to integrate all this, we're going to break this down into a few different parts. So this first part, we'll recognize that this term right here is exactly equal to 1 minus cosine squared of theta. So the integral from 0 to pi of 1 minus cosine squared theta d theta is going to be equal to pi minus pi over 2, or simply pi over 2. Likewise, we'll have a term over here that will be the integral, just taking this 1 first. We'll deal with the cosine theta later. But this 1 times sine n theta times sine theta. So we'll have an integral from 0 to pi of sine n theta times sine of theta d theta. And as we've discussed in previous lessons, this is going to have a non-zero or component. This will be non-zero if and only if n is equal to 1. And in that case, the integral of sine squared theta is simply equal to pi over 2. We said that this is if and only if n is equal to 1. We'll do the same case. We'll have a negative integral from 0 to pi times sine of n theta times cosine theta sine theta d theta. The key here is recognizing that this term, this cosine theta times sine theta, is equal to 1 half sine of 2 theta which means that this will be equal to negative pi over 4 once we incorporate this term, this 1 over 2, if and only if n is equal to 2. Since we have a 2 theta here, n has to be equal to 2 theta in order for that integral to be equal to pi over 2. And then once we add in the negative sign and the 1 over 2, we end up with pi over 4. All right, so now that we have each of these components, we can sum them all together in order to arrive at the total moment. So our moment over the leading edge per unit span is going to be equal to, and this time we'll cancel out this 2 and this 2, and end up with negative 1 half rho v infinity squared, using that v infinity as well, times c squared, and then we'll have an a naught term, which is multiplied by this integral, which was pi over 2. And then we'll have, cycling through all of our a n's, we have a term if n is equal to 1. So we have an a 1 times this pi over 2. And then if n is equal to 2, then we end up with this evaluation. So this will be an a2 times pi over 4. So that is our moment about the leading edge. And once again, we want to look at the coefficient associated with this, which is coefficient of the moment about the leading edge, which will be equal to m prime over the leading edge over 1 half rho v infinity squared times c squared, which is simply equal to negative, and then we can take this pi over 2 out of each of these to arrive at a naught plus a1 minus a2 over 2. And this is exactly the moment's coefficient.